Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our deep programming language series. In this lesson, I'm going to hope to give you something a little bit exciting coming to the deep programming language. So it's just a preview feature, but it has to do with the sort of ownership and borrowing system. Now, this is something that's made Rust a really popular language lately, and it's really gained a lot of traction. But again, D also has a focus on memory safety and is even looking at introducing, or I should just say in progress, a owning borrow ship system. So if that's something that's strictly a requirement to write safer code, for instance, there is a mechanism coming in D for that. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look. So in order to take a look at this preview feature, what I'm going to have you do is just go to the documentation, go to the language reference, scroll all the way down, and you can see it's one of the latest features here on live functions. So again, I'll just highlight the fact that this isn't a complete thing. It's probably not ready for production, but maybe something that you can start implementing if you're really on the cutting edge. But you can use the preview for the D improvement proposal 1021 to activate this feature if you want to start playing around with it. Now I'm introducing it today just so that you know that, again, D is an evolving language. It's constantly improving, and I think this is one of the cool things that's coming up here. So I'm just going to go through a simple example showing the first sort of notion of ownership and what the new at live attribute does, or at least is being previewed in the D language. So with that said, let's go ahead and just take a look at this example here. And I've actually kind of written out or recreated this, but I want to go ahead and walk through it. But the main idea here is that at any point in a program for each memory object, so maybe something that you're allocating memory for, with a pointer or with new or however that object's getting allocated, there's exactly one live mutable pointer to it or all the live pointers to it are read only. So that's the main idea. Um, and I think that summarizes nicely what sort of this ownership borrowing mechanism is and why some languages like Rust, for instance, have gotten a lot of traction. Now C++ and our languages have things like unique pointer, so you can also gain a lot of memory safety with these features. And again, D is adding this at live attribute for writing safer function code. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this preview of the feature. I've got an example here, but the first thing that I want to go ahead and show you is that um, the D version that I'm using, if you want to try this, um, I think you'll need a version at least 2.1 or later. Uh, now there's been a few releases uh, since I've updated my compiler, but you'll want to compile your code again with a preview for the D improvement proposal or the dip here, uh, 1021 here. Okay. Now here's the idea. So I've written my code here. Here's my main function and I've got a little test function. And just for the sake of this example, I'm going to use malloc for memory allocation because, again, maybe I just want that extra performance. And again, just since we're on the cutting edge, let's go ahead and mark these as no GC uh, functions here just to uh, ensure no garbage collection uh, is taking place and these types of things uh, that, uh, again, if you're using D, it's a systems level language, and sometimes you want some extra performance. So anyways, let's go ahead and just run this. You can see it runs just fine. We're allocating our memory. Uh, I have a function for that that returns a pointer to whatever memory was allocated here, in this case, five integers. And then I release that memory here with the uh, star P here. And my test function simply allocates and releases memory. So there's nothing actually wrong. This is a correct program. This is how we want to write our software. But all too often, let's go ahead and say I allocate and I forget to release. OK, I'm going to go ahead and run this again. And well, nothing, nothing happens here. You know, we're just going to have a memory leak. <laughs> we're not releasing the resource that we are allocating. Right. And that's sort of breaking our rule uh, from this. Uh, uh, article here saying that at any point in the program for each memory object, there's exactly one live mutable pointer to it, uh, or all the live pointers are just read only, meaning they're not changing. So we could have as many things as we want pointing to malloc if they're all read only. Uh, but if we just have uh, our memory allocated and then it's left alone, well, there's an issue here. So how do we fix this? Well, let's go ahead and just put the at live attribute on this uh, function here. Uh, I could put it at the front here. I'll run this and immediately we get an error. It's saying variable main.test uh, p is left dangling at the return. Okay, so we're not uh, properly handling it. Okay, so we want to be able to uh, release this here. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, just kind of play around with this a little bit more. And let's see what types of uh, errors we get. So again, we can try to uh, fix this. So let's put our release back in. Uh, it's happy. Okay. Uh, now let's recall, if you've been watching at the series, uh, 
from the start, or at least the past few episodes, we've talked about double freeing. So what if I release uh, this resource twice? Let's go ahead and see what D tells us. Let's go say, hey, that uh, same problem here, this variable P that we've allocated uh, has undefined state, cannot be read here. Uh, variable P is not owner, cannot consume its value. Okay, so it's complaining about this line uh, 17 here, basically, that we're releasing this resource twice. So it's not really owned by anything. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, reallocate it here after we've released it. Again, uh, that's fine here. Okay, so that seems good. Uh, now let's see, what if we allocate twice? Again, breaking our rule and having multiple... Uh, you know, allocations here, uh, grabbing two separate pieces of memory and then only release it. Okay, so we're just kind of stress testing the system here. And it looks like error variable, you know, assigning an owner without disposing of the uh, owner value here. Okay, so again, we need to release this before reassigning it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and try um, again a few more experiments here. Um, let's go ahead and see if I can just. Uh, release here or something uh let's just go ahead and grab a pointer here p uh i don't know something like that equals null let's see if it complains about uh basically the error we want to catch is we don't want to wait till runtime to see if we're freeing uh something so let's go ahead and see uh, what that does uh and that looks like it's not uh catching well i guess we can free something that is null so that's okay in fact in languages like c you can free stuff um, but what if we do like void? So, uh, void is a way, and we haven't really talked about this, meaning that we have basically unallocated. So that sort of undefined value. It's up to us to acquire some resource. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is good. So we have undefined state cannot read here. Uh, and then we could call P allocate, right? Once we decide, right? Maybe we do some, you know, other steps here. Uh, in between, that might be a reason, again, for performance. You can set stuff to void so that it's uninitialized. Again, we'll talk about that later in the series. Uh, but yeah, this works here. So, so this is pretty cool to have at live. It, it is kind of inspecting or tracking that, well, there's basically only one thing pointing to some resource and um, that that resource is freed exactly one time. Um, and that's pretty neat here. So I think this ownership uh, borrowing uh, system here Again, you can read through the uh, docs here. Again, I'm just going to highlight because uh, I'm not advocating for you know starting to use this or not, but I think it's something interesting to play around with or something to know that you know the D language is heading in this direction um, and has always had memory safety in mind uh, for years as far as I know. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. You can take a, a read of this uh, and explore the live attribute and all the features here. Uh, learn a little bit about how maybe the pointers are tracked or the different states that they're in. Um, and again, if you're coming from maybe a Rust background um, and have some uh, idea about the ownership borrowing system or in C++, if you're familiar with the smart pointer classes and have been using those for a while. Again, this is all in the same family of stuff to help you write better code. All right. So with that said, if you want to find these lessons, make sure you check out the playlist before. Make sure you check out the course here if you just want to see everything and track your progress. And otherwise, folks, enjoyed that lesson there. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, are really getting excited, hopefully, about some of these new features coming into the D language. Again, uh, D goes through the uh, DIP proposals for D improvement proposals. And, um, you know, there's some really cool stuff to be excited about. And I just wanted to share that with you folks. So thanks, as always, for your time and attention. I'll look for you in the discussions below. And with that said, we'll see you next time.